Okay, um, let's uh, begin. We were uh, talking about uh, a few OpenMP constructs and uh, there was something that I had uh, uh, said that I'll uh, figure out and, and come back with details, which was the copy in operator from the uh, parallel construct. Um, what I was telling you about copy in was actually uh, for some clause called copy private, which is not a part of for construct, uh, not a par part of the parallel construct. Okay, So what copy in actually does, what I had said was that copy in is a way for, it's a similar to first private, except any threads value can be broadcast to others. Okay, That is the semantics for thread private. Uh, copy private. There are all these combinations and it's sometimes hard to figure out which is which. Copy private, which we will look at later, uh, just to make sure that you understand that also, allows for one of the threads values to be copied at the end. Um, first private is whatever the master had is going to get copied to everybody. Last private is the last iteration um, that is going to get copied. And copy in is, is in fact a, a special type of first private, but it is specifically for variables that are declared to be thread private. Okay, So now you've got all variants of copy, thread and private, and probably in also. There are variables that are shared and, and, uh, and private that we had said will be on the clause. But there are variables that I had earlier mentioned in, in my first or second slide about OpenMP. They are thread private. Okay. These variables um, are not created when a parallel construct is created. Right? Their scope is global. They exist even outside the parallel construct, which means that between two parallel constructs, they, they don't make sense between in, in sequential construct because it is private for a thread, but there is kind of a global thread, global private, which is called thread private, meaning that I've got two parallel constructs and I declare something to be thread private. It automatically is available here as well as here. Okay, so thread private is essentially private but global in nature and not just has the scope of that construct. And for thread private, you have to use copy in, not first variable, okay, not first private. Um, okay, so now let's get back to where we were. We were looking at various clauses of... Uh, so, sir, what are variable 1 and 2? So, sir, what is the thread private? No, no, now, now copy in is just like any other last private, first private, right? You are saying that copy in these variables, those variables must be declared to be thread private earlier on, before this parallel construct has begun. Okay. Um, okay, back to uh, the parallel for construct, which um, either in the context of uh, OMP parallel for or OMP parallel for followed by OMP for, um, we had looked at all these, uh, one thing that we were going to talk about uh, schedule, uh, one thing that I was just discussing earlier is that when you say that this for construct has something that is ordered, right? so you're declaring that there is some ordered clause in there, we'll have examples later on for all of these also. And later on somewhere you say ordered, which means there is something, some section of code that is ordered. You are saying that that section of code must be executed in the order of the uh, the loop itself. Okay, it's sequentialized uh, with respect to the ordering of the loop that would have occurred if you hadn't been running it in parallel. Okay, the sequential ordering of the loop. No wait, we already talked about. There is an implicit barrier at the end. Um, if you don't want that barrier, and we'll see some examples where you may not want it, you can simply say no wait then whoever is done with the for loop or their part of the for loop 
can go on and do other things. All right, here is the schedule clause, which takes at least a kind, what type of schedule you want. And there is an additional parameter that it can take, okay, which has been uh, listed as chunk size. Uh, there are uh, four different values that the schedule can take. One is static, which is the default, which says that I've got a for loop to do. It has some number of iterations and I've got some number of threads. Let's say m iterations to run among n threads. Okay, It's going to break those iterations into some groups of iterations, Okay, chunks. So for example, it may say 0 to 4 is one chunk, 5 to 8 is another chunk. And so uh, the number of chunks will be the total number of iterations divided by the chunk size. Okay, roughly, it may not be exactly divisible. So the static says that I'm going to assign the first chunk to the first thread, second chunk to the second thread, and the process, number of processors is n, nth chunk to the nth thread, and then again the n plus first chunk to the first thread. Okay, so chunks are going to go round robin. you de uh, can de declare certain chunk size. So if you say chunk size is one, for example, then that means the first iteration is done by, or the first loop, loops iteration is done by the first thread, second by the second, third by the third, and then after n threads, n, first, n plus first iteration will be done by the first again. Okay. Um, if you do not specify a chunk size, because chunk size is an optional parameter, it says that they are roughly equal. The chunks that will be given will be roughly equal in size. Um, I think all implementations have continuous, but the specs don't say continuous. You give chunk size to be loaded by number of threads, so the first thread will get the first. So this is an implement. This is not actually specified in the spec. So the implementation you will use is is doing this. Um, it is basically the spec says it's roughly equal and it's taken by most implementations to say that if it is exactly divisible then the chunk size is going to be the number of iterations divided by the number of processors otherwise some of them will have one more okay um, the dynamic schedule is you do your job then go ask for the next iteration okay. so it's in the order threads become available to, to perform an iteration. So in the beginning, suppose you had n threads and everybody was ready because there was no other code. This is where parallel for occurred. Then one chunk will, give, will be given to the first, one chunk to the second, one chunk to the third, one chunk to the last. And then whoever gets done with their iteration first gets the next chunk. Okay. The chunk size is again determined by you. Now, in this case, the default chunk size is one. If you don't say a chunk size, then the first iteration is to the first, second to the second, uh, nth to the nth, and then whoever gets done first gets the n, n plus first. All right. Um, there is a variant of dynamic called guided. It's similar to dynamic. Chunks are made. Default is still one. But now, instead of saying that I've given some chunks to some processors and whoever gets done gets the next chunk. The assignment of the chunk size is dynamically changed, not only assignment of the chunk. Okay, So the assumption is that I've got so much work remaining to do. My original chunk size may have been 10, but now I have only 10 things to do. If I give all 10 to the first processor that came in and just behind it are two, three more coming in, they will just not get anything. So I'm going to keep adjusting how much I give based on how much work I have remaining. Okay. And the last one, runtime, basically defers it. It says you set a, uh, an environment variable, which will be one of these things, either static or dynamic or guided. And so it will be determined at runtime, not a part of the code itself. Okay. If there are uh, multiple of these uh, schedule only one is allowed. Right? 
a given parallel for has to have a uniquely defined schedule either if there is a one on the class then there is only one on the class no in a complete program mm. it's for only for this for for another one there some some other schedule may be applied not use runtime to control all of them no individually right right it's basically saying i don't know what to do the user knows best and so when the user runs says do this for everybody so in guide what is the importance of chunk size what is the importance of chunk size you said it will be dynamically changing that's the dynamic then no, no. yeah so basically it says that i've got so much work that remains to be done in in the the first one dynamic it says that i'm going to dynamically assign whoever gets free gets the next chunk okay that chunk is predetermined you 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 you've said that i want to do 10 things at a time so the next processor gets 10 things even if i have nothing more to do in the guided you say i've got only 10 more things remaining and i've got th 13 processors all of them are busy because one guy is asking for it because it got done but i am expecting that others will also get done soon enough and so instead of saying you take all 10 i'm going to say you take just 10 by 13 of them in this case one because minimum one have to be has to be assigned and i'm hoping that very soon others will also free up and by the time you get done with one others will also be following you how is chunk size decided in this case the the original chunk size is part of the uh, if you look at the chunk size uh, option right it says kind comma chunk size so you provide a chunk size and that's what's going to be used in the beginning right and it's default by one uh, it's one by default but then it gets dynamically adjusted the dynamic adjusting is like how does how is that specified there's only one algorithm that says that i've got so many things to do so many threads to do them and so many things to do keeps changing dynamically right so many things remaining to do divided by the number of processors i have Uh, in pilot for cluster uh, do we put restriction like uh, iterations have to be uh, independent of each other like inter iteration dependency should not be there you would normally not by the construct itself uh -huh. you would normally have them be independent okay. right um sometimes there are areas that you may need to be done in a certain sequence but other rest of it can be independent right for example everybody look at the 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 sum computation that we had i've got s equal to 0 then everybody is adding something to it right but if suppose that something is a big computation i'm adding the results of a big monte carlo simulation or of some big simulation okay addition is going to be done in two three instructions mm -hmm. but the, the what to add is going to get done in thousands of instructions so i let everybody do those their independent thousand things first mm -hmm. and then in the, in there is a, in a small ordered section you can please simply say s plus equal to whatever your result was and then it's going to get added in sequence can i get the most efficient surely not necessarily not always it's supposed to be uh, the most dynamic the most uh, adaptable um but again it depends there is an overhead associated with it uh, and uh, one is the actual implementation overhead there is more work to do to figure out how to manage it but the other is that you may end up so suppose you had this chunk of 10 example that i was taking you had 10 things to do and these 10 things can be done fast enough that you might as well give to one rather than hope that somebody else will come in because this guy either is a fast processor much faster processor than everybody else right so this guy can do those 10 and nobody else will come ask for more in which case if you waited then the same guy will come back again saying give me one more and he'll only give one more okay so there is a load dependence on it and there is also an algorithmic overhead okay all right um the other thing that was part of um, the for construct was the um, reduction which we looked at 
the the context of but again uh, maybe it's a repetition revision and it's not just for fall you will see that reductions need to be done so often that there will look at efficient algorithms to do reduction in various contexts also um but in in this case efficiency is not desired not uh, um mandated by the standard it simply says that everybody is generating some value and there is going to be some hidden code that the compiler will generate which is going to sum up or, or perform some operation right there is some function f which gets performed on values v1 to vn with for n threads um and uh, in in more detail these are the kinds of things you would do right you can say add or uh, multiply or bitwise operate on them um there are also some symbolic versions of it which i have not listed here uh, if you want to uh, simply do boolean and of lots of things uh, in fact boolean and is already listed here there there are um non symbolic non uh, operator symbolic versions of of many of these also other examples of that would be min okay i want to find the min of these many things that's not an operator right so there's a symbolic thing that says the operation is min um and the variable is some private variable that you've had what happens if we don't specify a reduction clause for a variable then all the values will get lost except the masters so the sum operation would be performed in the like two terms uh, or only on thread the sum of all the so that, that's that's where it says that uh in fact it says the resulting loop may not be parallel in 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 fact it says so in the spec that there is no assumption on efficiency of how the reduction is performed okay uh we will look at algorithms to do it efficiently in parallel but uh, it's I, in fact i don't even know what gcc does um whether it takes all of those variables and sums them up on one of the cores meaning inside one of the threads or it does it in par i i don't think it does it in par uh, we so we are now done with for construct this is another construct called single um which is where that copy private that i was referring to uh, is used i have not listed all the um, um in fact i couldn't have listed here because i have given it as an example rather than as a definition of the construct but uh, one of the clauses for the single construct is copy private okay and the single construct basically has uh, the notion similar to the force ordered construct but a little different for in force ordered construct you have you wanted to make the iterations happen in that part of the code happen in the sequence that the sequential uh, code would have run here you say that there is this piece of code that i need to be run by one of the threads i do not care which it is i don't want to replicate it for n threads okay. here is an example it says i have uh, um a function f1 to evaluate okay and uh, it's cannot be parallelized function f1 is a sequential function um each of the threads is going to take the result of f1 and then do something with it okay so there's some something that happens in parallel computes f0 for all the iteration values and then one of the threads computes f1 it is going to be available to everybody cuz f1 is going to be shared or in this case x is going to be shared and then everybody now computes f2 but multiplies with this x the scale factor or whatever their f2 values okay you could have put the entire thing in one uh omp for section 
but then everybody would have computed f2 and if you don't want it because f2 is for some reason um, high resource uh, function then and and you can't parallelize if you if it is a high resource function and it can be parallelized then that would be the idea right you just do parts of f2 in different places but if it cannot be then you simply do it at one place the benefit is that whoever got to that single first with got done with its said it's part of the four iterations early will get to do the single will start on single early okay and others can simply follow this is no issue because uh, a is being computed right now and so and you call a function on it while it is being computed um that's why in this case in this case you cannot because and that's why there is no no wait there is an implicit barrier at the end of for and if you want if if you know that you don't need it then you can say no wait and uh, a needs to be flush as well um a would uh, so here a is yes it it needs to be flushed um before the single before the single um but here a the entire array is being used okay um and i don't know if i did that intentionally but uh, even if one element of a was getting used you would still have to flush it okay now there are some flushes that are going to happen by default at the end of for so when barrier happens all of the shared variables will get flushed so here you don't need explicit flushing but for this to work yes you need that flushing that for construct has ended before this is done like we have not put the curly bracket that no no it is supposed to end that for is over right now there is a single okay and at the end of the single sing, uh, at the end of single is also a barrier unless you want no wait but there is only one one huh there is only one thread when we are going to no but others are not doing it they are still there because there is a for region there is a parallel region okay if you don't want in this case you would want everybody to wait right because everybody is going to use the x value that this single generates if they proceed then they'll get some junk okay so in this case you want that barrier if you don't want if you don't need that barrier then again you use no wait on single so where are we seeing that uh, one thread needs to do this extra computation but other don't need to so Should the schedule not be intelligent, or, or should I not be telling the schedule that one thread needs to be uh, let out before before others? I mean, over here we have a dependency on a, but suppose that it it could be possible. It just complicates the model a little bit. Right. So instead of saying that I want a barrier where everybody has to come, I want a barrier where n first can go and the remaining n can wait. Okay. So there's more complicated semantics you can build in, but it's there. uh for that to be there so before the single gets in uh, executed all the for in parallel thread would get finished yes in this case because there is no no wait yeah. um one thing that um is going to be true for all barriers and here that is implicit for example in single you can put it in an if you can say uh if uh, omp get thread num is less than 3 i'm just cooking up some example um then pragma single do this and go out what's going to happen anybody who's beyond the 3 is not going to encounter single okay of course the, they won't they won't do the thing that single is doing because the entire thing is part of the if conditional so three threads come into the sig- single part and only one of those three will actually do it the remaining seven just skip that part it's possible to write that code so do you continue sorry continue the for of second for they would continue with the second for they would right but the three threads that went through single 
will never make any progress because the other seven will never reach that barrier. Right? So there was an if conditional that says if my ID is less than three, OMP is single, do this thing that only one guy has to do, and then end brace, end if, right? What happens? The first three encounter the signal because they go into the if, see the OMP signal, OMP single. The other seven just go jump across the if, okay? So they proceed further because there's no single for them. But these three, whoever of the three gets there first will do the single. At the end of the single, that guy will wait for the other two to come up, but also the other seven because the group is made of 10 people. So these three people will just keep waiting and the other seven will go and do whatever they, they had to do or whatever they didn't have to do. And, and if they reach another barrier, then they'll get stuck over there. Just like uh, single, all barriers are respect to the threads which are uh, Barriers are with respect to that group, the, the current group, the par current, current parallel group. So if, if I would have written no weight in, in If you had written no weight, yeah, no weight, there is no barrier. The implicit barrier is just not there. Okay. So if, if there is nested parallel, then what happens to single? Or, or no, so single is about the, the closest parallel. Okay, so it's as if there is there are more threads around it, but you're only barriering for your group. Okay, um, that uh, is going to bring us to the sections construct, and I'm going to start that as the next section. Now we have uh, section seven B, um, which brings us to the sections construct. Sections construct is very similar to the parallel construct, um, except that region which we said at the, in the parallel construct, multiple threads are created and every thread is going to run this region. And if you want different things done, then you say, if my ID is zero, do this. If my ID is one, do that, and so on. Sections formalizes that. It says this is a parallel section. So you say uh, pragma OMP, OMP sections. Then you create section. Pragma OMP section, pragma OMP section, pragma OMP section. And every thread is going to run one of these sections. OK? Yes, Wh which thread runs which section is unknown. Something like switch case. It is basically a switch case version of if statement or of, of loop statement. Why well, they need to do this in little of this thing? You can just simply check whether my ID is this. If my ID is uh, one, do this ID is two. Switch case is also a substitution for if else, yeah. else, if else. In this case, it's basically not ID dependent. Right? For example, ID dependent thing might be slow. The, 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 the thread that reaches first may not have the ID. No, the, so because that is parallel, everybody is reaching, right? Everybody is checking, everybody who can, right? It's possible that multiple uh, uh, tasks get assigned to the same thread, um, but everybody is checking. And then if your ID is not there, you go do something else. If your ID is not there, you go do something else. Um, number of sections greater than number of processor then again some processor would be yes I mean what the use of section it is more a syntactical difference uh, the other thing that this has is a slightly different set of clauses it has this uh, copy private clause which parallel for doesn't um, and copy private, no wait, that was the single construct which has the copy private. The one that executes it, I missed that. Single construct has pri copy private because one of the n or wh whatever the member uh, size is, is going to execute the single part. And it is that thread's value that's going to get uh, written 
into the master's copy at the end of it. Okay, so that's how single does copy private. What about the value that it uses inside that single concept? So the values would come from that single master only. The input into that. So it, that depends on whether it is first private or not. And if it is not, then you, somehow you initialize it. The other thing that, uh, so section is somewhere between the parallel and the for. Because in parallel, there is no notion of reduction. But in section, you can actually have a reduction. At the end of the section, um, I think there is a value. Um, so that everybody gets through their part of the section and then go on to the next thing. But the number of sections are more No, so at end of construct doesn't mean end of code. Right? Each guy's section will be done and then it's going to do another section. It's still part of the same section. Right? But before anybody goes out of the section's construct, that, that needs a barrier. All right. Um, those are the main constructs for determining um, which thread runs what. There are other constructs. The sections no. are also in parallel. The sections is in parallel. Sir, example, example of sections. Where do you use it? When you have completely so, for example, somebody said Firefox and Internet Explorer, right? So you can have that in a section. Sections, uh, browsers, and then you have a section, or the first section can be Internet Explorer, the second section may be Firefox, the third may be Chrome or whatever. Um, this is uh, not quite synchronization directive yet. Um, this is uh, probably um, titled a little too aggressively. Um, it's very similar to the single construct. Um, it's a master construct. It says that only master will execute this part, the master thread, not any of the members. Okay? Which means that if master isn't done with other things, others will have to, uh, others, no, there is no barrier here. So others don't have to wait. If master is not done, then this is not done yet. This part, is this part hasn't been done. This part is invisible to other. Just... The variables can be shared between this and the non. This part of the code, they just skip it. Yeah, they just skip it. It's like it doesn't exist for them. Um, so here is an example. Um, just a cooked up example is basically the same code we had earlier. Um, but in this case, the master does it. All right. Now we are going to talk about this uh, synchronization primitives. Um, so, sir, uh, in the previous example, like uh, after that, when we weren't using master, when we were doing some F2 on A, now we are doing F2 on A, so this doesn't mean that A is a change value that master has gone. Rather than just keep the one. The other threads would have computed A before. Yeah, so if, I, if the master changes some values in A, it might not be visible to them. Yeah, right. You have no idea whether they did it before the master or after the master. No, but there was a barrier at end of all. Not at the end of master. Oh, in this example, in that example, yeah. A master appears immediately after for, then everybody is done with their for before they do anything after the master. This is the critical section which any concurrent piece of code needs to have. Uh, and so instead of directly saying you lock this, you unlock that, uh, although there is such a facility, uh, you simply say pragma OMP critical section, give it a name, and then write some code. It says that everybody in that group is going to do it, only one at a time. Okay. It's similar to ordered, except you don't know who's going to get there first. <clears throat> if you, and, and, and uh, in fact, it's more powerful than ordered also because this is a global 
name. Okay. When you say pragma OMP critical access bank balance in any in inside your program, which has the same shared namespace, any parallel for parallel construct anywhere, okay, any thread anywhere will not get into a critical section named access bank balance as long as you are here. It's a variable, right? So internally, it's a lock. Okay. Yeah, so that means you're, you're putting a lock on this variable called access bank balance, which means anywhere anybody else cannot get that lock. Any other thread. In your program, so stop before the instruction that accesses this, or you stop before the section that accesses this variable. So it may be a whole for loop, or so you stop, you not even get into that for loop. Or so stop the, the for loop is is undefined over here, right? Either the for loop is out anywhere in the program if access bank balance is being no. So it it it's access bank balance is not a variable. Okay, it is a section. So you say anywhere it says pragma OMP critical access bank balance. And then there is a piece of code, a block of code that is being protected by access bank balance. Nobody can get in any block of block of code which is protected by access bank balance. Okay. And if you do not provide a name, then it's a global critical section. Nobody anywhere can get into any such unnamed critical region. Sorry? No name is also. If you call it no name. Don't give any name there. That means it's of no use. Why? No, no. Nobody anywhere can go. Right? The whole thing will become secret. Only that part of the whatever is protected, yeah, whatever is protected. Sir, um, suppose one thread enters a critical section. Uh, barrier is another synchronization primitive. We have already talked about it many times. Um, in this case, there is not much to add to barrier, and in fact, I don't think they even have a notion of named barriers. Uh, so you simply say pragma OMP barrier, and this this is not global. This is only in the context of your group, which means any thread in your group cannot go past the barrier unless everybody reaches there. Okay, and again, the same story applies. If you put it inside an if statement, then you're asking for trouble. Um, order directive, we have already talked about this. This is another synchronization uh, place. It is inside. It can be inside um, inside a um, for region. It can also be inside a sections region. Okay, when it is inside a sections region, then ordered by ID. Ordered by the, the sequence in the section. Okay. You can have an ordered section which is inside a sections section. So the yes. sections, then we are section and inside that order. Inside the section, there is an order. Sections. Yeah, so sections is just kind of the say, saying that sections are beginning. Then each section then you can have an order. is a region of code inside the sections. Right? So sections is just made of section uh, constructs. And inside the section construct, you may encounter an order. Inside the sections or section? Section. 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 inside the sections construct, there can only be section constructs, right? So the ordered is in the in one of the section constructs, right? How do you make the same ordered appear in all the section constructs? By making a function call which has the ordered construct. Okay, so if you make a call, everybody makes a function call to an ordered, to 
a function which has an ordered construct inside, then everybody is encountering the same order. That is going to get run in the order, lexical order of the sections. Okay, the whoever the first section, whoever is, who, whichever thread happens to execute the first section, will do that part first. And whichever happens to execute the second section, will do that part next, and so on. Okay. So, uh, if there will be ordered and critical section is just that. Uh... So, ordered has a notion of a predefined order. If it's coming from a loop, then it's the iteration order. If it's coming from a section, then it is the order in which the listing is. So, in order, one thread completes this section and the, then another one starts or is it the order of assigning the section? No, no, no. Completion. Yes. Um, so, this is, uh, it says binds to innermost and closing loop. Uh, that's not complete because it's not only for loops. Um, sequential order is true because the sections also has a sequential order. Um, and that is that. Here is the flush directive. Uh, we've already seen this before also. You get a flush set and all the flush sets that have anything intersecting, right, any variable common among them, will have to be seen in the same order by every single thread. Okay. Um, atomic directive is there. You can add something to something without worrying about it being broken into several instructions. And so there are a few atomic uh, examples are here. So, this is like having the notion of atomics without um, locking something. What happened to the lock calls? I think they are coming here because uh, they are not part of a section, they are not part of a construct, but a function call. Um, we have seen, I believe, most of these function calls um, earlier. Uh, there are many more. I haven't listed them all, of course. Uh, these are probably the ones you are most likely to use, um, including the last one, which tells you the current wall time in seconds. Um, you can set nesting. You can enable nesting by saying set nested one. Uh, get number of processors, get number of threads, get your thread number, and, and many more. Okay. So, uh, just a question about wall time. Does each in, uh, processor have independent notion of time? Um, it is so that wall time is not fully specified in the specs. Uh, it is possible. Is it, is it possible that there is two between different times? Yes, it is possible. Okay. So, what is only guaranteed that if the same thread makes two calls to wall time, then that thread saw that much time between those two calls. So, every processor has, has, it, has its own individual clock. So, a, an implementation like multi-core Intel will use the same clock. Right? So, in your case, when you run it on any of the threads, you will get consistent results. Um, but that is not specified in the specs. So, uh, and another implementation where maybe there are two different uh, machines where these processors are somehow simulating shared memory that need not be the case. So if these are different uh, uh, sockets, like uh, not multi core but multi processor scenario, do they still share the same uh, clock? Um, in if, in uh, the case of Intel architecture, they, the same clock goes to both the processors. You don't have multiple clock generators. Okay, here are these functions that I was thinking of. Uh, you need to declare a lock. So lo there's a special lock type, OMP lock uh, underscore T. And you need to declare a variable of this type. And you need to initialize it by calling OMP init lock ampersand this variable name, giving it the address. And then you get to set lock and unset lock. 
Okay. And so if two people are trying to set the same law, then only one is going to succeed. Um, there is a slightly weaker version of set next nest lock, nested lock, okay? where if you hold this lock, then you are, this will succeed, the call will succeed. If you call OMP set lock on the same lock twice, same thread calls it twice, the second one will block, okay? because somebody holds the lock. It doesn't know that or it doesn't care that you hold it. But if you do it with set next nest lock, then if you hold it, then you will get it. And internally, there is a counter. It says you've caught it three times. You have to unset it twice. Um, yes. Yes. You, you do have to unset it twice. If you do unset nest lock. One unset nest and then unset. You, you do two unset nest locks. But, but if you simply do uns, uh, unset lock without nesting on the same lock. So you... Call set nest lock after set lock or you? Uh, so you call, you call, lock. you are, so I think it is non-conforming to mix the two. Although I'm not 100% sure about that. Which means that the intent is that you set lock and you unset lock. Or you set nest lock as many times as you like, but you set unset also as many times, uh, uh, that many times. How is this different from the OMP critical section? This is more general. Right? You don't have to create a section. Um, somebody in that section may want to have the same lock. And in fact, you may need multiple locks depending on the condition. Right? For some reason, you need three locks to operate on three separate things in some part. So critical section is a bit rigid, although much more convenient, right? a simple Simpler version, simpler interface, but uh, locks will give you more power. You can set a set of locks and then unset some of them. So you can hold five locks and not hold the other three. Critical section is basically um, a structured version of lock, if you will. And can you uh, nest critical sections? Uh, you cannot nest critical sections. Critical section if you are calling the parallel construct. Maybe you can try to call an uh, critical section. What does it say? A critical region may not be nested ever inside a critical region <laughs> with the same name. Okay? If it's a different name, it's a different they're they're not related to each other. Or if it is no name, then doesn't have a name, then again it cannot be nested. Um, and just because you're not nesting doesn't mean you can not get into deadlocks, but um, at least it helps to not get into deadlocks. Or rather, if you nest it, it helps to get into deadlocks. All right. And there are also uh, this notion of closely nested. Okay. And uh, the, the next set of four things are not allowed to be closely nested. The first is never nested. And closely nested means one after the other. So, for example, when you say OMP4, OMP4. That means it's nested with respect to each other. Or sections, sections. That means it's the second sections is nested within the first sections. What is an example of not closely nested? You say sections, and then in one of the section, you have another four region, another parallel region. So, that thread is forking off five more. And then in there, each of them can have more sections. Okay. Uh, so uh, you basically cannot um, closely nest work sharing or barrier constructs inside either another work sharing construct or a critical region or an ordered construct or a master construct. Work sharing means for? Work sharing means for and sections. Okay. Meaning that there is... A code to be uh, run and the members will run parts of it. Um, you cannot have a master region inside a work sharing region. Uh, it can only be inside a parallel region. And you cannot have an ordered region inside a critical region. Which makes sense. Let's uh, stop this uh, section.